Okay, let's look at another example. Let's give the domain in a simplified expression for this function m. What's its domain? Well, it's the set of all h values in R that makes sense to plug into it. So what doesn't make sense to plug into it? Well, I certainly can't have the bottom vanish, so h can't be 0. I also can't have 9 plus h being negative, because I've got to take the square root of it. So I need 9 plus h to be bigger than or equal to 0. So what that means is I need h to be a real number such that h has to be bigger than negative 9, bigger than or equal to negative 9, and h can't be 0. So in terms of what it looks like on the number line, we've got negative 9. We're allowing that. We're allowing all of these values here in the domain, except I've got to exclude 0. But anything beyond 0 works as well. So there is what our domain looks like as a shaded collection of points on the number line. Now we want to come up with a simplified expression for it. Well, how do we know that there is a more simple or simplified expression for this? How do we know that it's just not as simplified as, as far as it could be? Well, here's what we do is we think to ourselves. The domain consisted of all values that are shaded here. Oh, look at this, 0. 0 is not allowed to be in the domain. Why is it not allowed to be in the domain? Well, when I plug it in, the bottom vanishes. Oh, but wait a minute. When I plug it in, the top also vanishes. Maybe there's a hidden factor of an h in the top as well. Maybe I can find that hidden factor of h up top, which would cancel with the one in the bottom. That's why I'm inclined to believe that there is a more simplified version of this. I should be able to cancel that h with something up top, because the numerator vanished when h was 0. So let's see. Can we do that? So I want to reveal a hidden factor of h in the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the quadratic conjugate of the top to both the top and the bottom. So I multiply by 1 in a fancy way, the conjugate of the top. So the conjugate was a difference of two things. I multiply by the sum of the same two things. And the reason is because when I take their product, I get the difference of their squares. And that's nice because one of the expressions involves a square root, so that when I take the product, I get a difference of their squares, which means the square root goes away. And I get access to what was under the square root sign. So that's why I'm multiplying by the conjugate. So we multiply by a conjugate to obtain a difference of squares in the numerator. So that becomes a 9 plus h minus 9. That's what happens when I expand out the top. The bottom is an h times the square root of 9 plus h plus 3. And that's the wonderful part, because now those 9's cancel, and I got h to reveal itself in the numerator. Now that it's revealed itself, I can cancel it off. So I cancel the h off, and I've got this simplified expression. It's simplified because I was able to cancel something off. I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. Again, remember, though, that if I canceled something off, it now looks like this new expression we're allowed to plug h into. But we're not, because h still isn't in the domain. So I still need to indicate that here for h not equal to 0. So there's our simplified expression. OK. So the term simplified can mean different things in different contexts. So I just want to say a little bit about what I mean by how do we know we've simplified this. So for us, in this course, this expression is simplified if we're able to take our original function, find another expression which agrees with our original one, the rule agrees with it for everywhere in our domain, but yet this new expression allows us to put more values into it, values that weren't originally in our domain, 
we're able to plug them into this new expression because there's no problems anymore with division by zero and whatnot. And so the idea is, the reason we want to do that, the reason we're interested in simplification in this way is because we're interested in questions like, okay, I've got this function m. What is it doing near zero? What are the function values near zero? I can't plug zero into it because it's not in the domain. But what, are the, what is the function doing near zero? If I plug in values really close to zero, what are the outputs of my function doing? And those questions are easily answered with this simplified expression. Because this expression agrees everywhere with my original one, except at zero. At zero, my original one's not defined, but at zero, this one is. So if I plug a zero into this expression, that tells me what the behavior of the points we're doing on this function around zero. So when h is really close to zero, what's the values of my function getting close to? Well, I plug h equals zero into this expression, and I see they're getting close to one-sixth. So the values of the function are getting close to one-sixth. We can see that with our first example that we did as well. So our original function here, very first example, when x was equal to 2, we weren't allowed to plug that in, so 2 is not in the domain. But I could ask, what's the function doing around 2? Well, when we look at our simplified expression, we can see, oh, the values of the function for x around 2, they're close to 4. So this was our original function. Our simplified function allowed us to get information about our original function near the points that weren't in the domain. In some sense, we're able to take our original function, which had some holes in them, and produce new simplified expressions for which we're able to determine what the height of those holes were. Okay, so that's our, that's our, our real goal. That's the kind of usefulness that we'll need in doing limit problems in a little bit. So let's look at the last example. So give a domain, give the domain and a simplified expression for this function. So what is our domain? Well, again, it's a set of all x values, which makes sense to plug into it. Doesn't make sense to plug in something where the denominator vanishes. Everything else will work out fine. So x cannot be 1 half. What's a simplified expression? What's a simplified expression for this? Well, I can factor out a 3 from each term in the top and pull it all the way out of the absolute value sign. I notice that this absolute value of 1 minus 2x, well, that's equal to the absolute value of 2x minus 1, just switching their order. And now I use the fact that absolute value is can really be defined as a piecewise function. And I want to do that because I notice 2x minus 1 is in top and bottom, so I'd like to cancel them. The problem is that there's going to be a sign issue that happens. When 2x minus 1 is positive, they'll cancel off directly and give me a result of 1 in the end. When 2x minus 1 is negative, they cancel off with, a, with leaving a negative 1. So I need to figure out how to get rid of the absolute value sign. And the way I do that is I look at absolute value as a piecewise defined function. And I say, OK, when 2x minus 1 is positive, I can remove the absolute value signs with no issues whatsoever. So that's if 2x minus 1 is positive. But if 2x minus 1 is negative, I remove the absolute value sign at the cost of having an extra minus sign. So that's if 2x minus 1 is negative. And now I see that this function simplifies down to 3 if 2x minus 1. Actually, I can even write that in a better way. 2x minus 1 is positive. That means x is bigger than a half. And it's negative 3 if x is smaller than a half. And wow, that is a simplified version of the function because it's so much easier to work out values of the function when it's expressed this way than when it was expressed in its original form. We see that the only values that it takes on are either 3 or negative 3, depending on which side of a half it's on. So our function looks like this. If this is a half, then it's either 
3 or negative 3. And I've used open dots here because the function's not defined at a half. A half's not in its domain, so I can't plug a half in, but every other value is, and the function either takes on the value 3 or negative 3, depending on which side of a half the x value's on. All right, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.